西来公阿有米哦，爸爸西来公阿有米。伊把奴姐哦，杰克吉诺西来米。我莫奴米都，爸爸哦你来阿有。阿罗阿有米，马杰克哦，爸米来公，西来公阿有米哦，爸爸西来公阿有米。伊把奴姐哦，杰克吉诺西勒米，我莫奴米都，爸爸哦，你勒阿哟，耶撒，阿罗阿哟米，马杰克哦，巴米勒库，阿罗阿哟米塞，马杰克哦，巴米勒库。Good morning and welcome back to Authentic Conversations, where we have authentic transformations, so we can what. Transform our lives. This is Mojisola Wilson. It's been a while. I'm not even home, as you can tell. I'm not in my studio. And、um, if you're wondering where I'm wearing photochromic glasses, I left the other one in the car, and it's kind of snowing where I am.、Um, so I choose to stay in the hotel. I hope you're fine with it. You know, I'm always abusing people that wear glasses on glasses in the house. Well, this is photochromic, and for some reason, it stays、um, blue. But let me tell you. It's been an amazing journey. You guys have been on this journey with me since 2009. You must be proud of yourself. So there's a lot I want to talk about today, but the first thing I want to tell you is,、um, look, the world is changing, but it's not changing fast enough. And you need to hold on to your values. You need to not let a lot of people to tell you who you are. And give me a second. Let me do what we always do, right? And here we go. Stay with me. Share this video. Like and follow the page. This whole month, I'm going to be here like I used to be three to two times, two to three times a week. And we're doing this blood is is blood thicker than water thing for a purpose. Hang there, get a glass of water, get a glass of ogogoro if you have to. It's five o'clock somewhere in the universe or twelve noon. I'll be right back. Just stay there with me. Welcome back to authentic transformations, authentic conversations where we have authentic transformations, right? So I decided to do this series because you guys know I come from、um, a polygamous family. My father had twelve wives and thirty-one children. Yes, you heard me. I said thirty-one children. So why am I asking? Why am I bringing this up to you? Because I have two sets of children as well. My I have four children and they have two separate fathers. One set I decided to have on my own. The second set, I decided that I got married and I had two sons with somebody else. And you know, we always talk about how blood is thicker than water. Blood is thicker than water. But honey, let me tell you, blood is thicker than water. But you can't drink blood. You can only drink water. What do I mean by that? I will tell you. Hang in there. If you want to come into the studio with me after I do my first um ten fifteen minutes, here's the link. And do me a favor, share this video because I, not because I want the numbers. You guys know I don't make money off of my,、um, you know, I don't make money off of my、um, social media interactions, right? But share the video so that other people can learn. By the way, did I tell you that, <laughs> you know, we had a mishap with the lamb? Yeah, my eyes are kind of swollen because I've been crying all night, right?、Um, But I don't want to talk about that yet. So let's stick to the topic today. But keep my baby, the lamb, Ufan, in your prayers. That may the winches. You know, I talk about my village people all the time, and people actually think I'm 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 kidding. They they think I'm joking. But believe me, the spiritual battles we all be fighting everywhere. Ah,、oh, it's crazy. So why are we having this conversation today? Really, we're having this conversation today. Honestly, hi Monique. We're having this conversation today. Because I think it's time we stop living in fantasy island. They always tell you your family is everything. Family is everything. Family is not everything. Family, according to the definition in the dictionary, is somebody that shares your same blood, right? What I have learned in my hundred years on Earth, it feels like a hundred. I'm sorry, it does. 
But what I've learned in my hundred years on earth is that family is not always blood, right? Family are those that come, right, to, into your life and they enhance it. They take time to get to know you. They spend quality time with you. They pray with you. They show you love. They shower you with co conversations and attention and things like that. Let me tell you, I have 26 brothers and sisters that don't talk to me. And I bet when my father was creating this nuclear family that he thought he was bringing up, he thought when we all grew up, we'd all be friends. When we all grew up, we'll all take care of each other or even take care of him. Because I'm sure at the very least, he wanted somebody to take care of him. You know, because a lot of parents have children in my days just so they have people that will take care of him, of, of them, right? And... One of the things that I noticed that um, as we grow older, hold on, somebody's sending me a text, right? Oh, hold on, please, on the show. As we grow older, right, we realize that we, you know, certain people's energies resonate with us and certain people's energies does not resonate with us because of our values and because of who we are, right? I'm telling you, today, at least two thirds of the people that I grew up with are not the people I call family. When I got married, not a single one of my family member came allegedly because, you know, I'm gay and they don't believe in people being gay because God, they had a special meeting with God, right? And God told them, look, anybody that's gay is this, is that. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I thought blood was thicker than water. See, it's not. You can't drink blood. I've heard so many because I had kids. I had two kids on each side on purpose because my mother left me when I was one. Right. And I thought if I had two kids, they wouldn't be lonely on oh, my first set are girls and they're kind of cool with each other. The second set are boys. And so it's uh, I, I can't even tell you what the dynamic is. So when we have children and we think the children are going to be brought together just because they're blood. Babala mistake. I think it's important that we understand that the work we put into nurturing our children, I mean, raise, not even raising, training them to be good human beings is the foundation of everything. Training them to be compassionate, empathetic, you know, kind. Training them not to be users that just use people. Training them to be respectful of themselves so they can now respect other people's choices and who other people are. Oh my God. That's like, I wish somebody had told me this when I was bringing up kids, I was raising my kids to be like, what? Just kids. I didn't let them talk to me. I didn't, I, I thought, because that's in the beginning, I didn't listen to them. I didn't let them talk to me because I, they couldn't talk back at me. They couldn't ask questions. Do it because I said so. Honey, that stuff came back and yeah, it did. And I'm 57. So why do I always sit here and preach to people? I sit here and preach to people because, look, I thought I was supposed to be a minister, right? So I got certified as a minister. But this right here, this that I do here, this is my church. This is my sermons. I'm bringing you my experiences. My daughters and sons, they're like oil and water. Okay. And then when you think, because your children are your children, they'll always be there for you. They'll always take care of you because you did that for your parents, honey. This new millennium children, it's all about me, myself, and I. Okay? It's all about me, myself, and I. This new generation of they, them, chair and table, they don't care about you. They only care about themselves. And I'm saying this because I interact with a lot of young people. And my job, my mission in life is to help them to change their mindsets. Because the way society has brought has allowed us parents not to parent our children, especially in America, where you cannot even give. You know, my father would look at me a certain way. And honey, I totally understood that. Yeah, I spoke that language. Because he didn't have to say much. He didn't have to do much. I just got what he was saying, right? I just got what he was saying. But in 2022, we're not allowed, Mary, to parent our children. We're not allowed to yell. 
Because if you yell, it's traumatizing. Like, honey, they're going to go outside and get yelled at. Right? We're not allowed to pray into children. We're not allowed to have conversations with their ch uh, children about anything that's real. We're only supposed to make them feel good all the time. Like the real world is a feel good all the time place. You're not preparing your child to go into the world and be a good citizen. And then we wonder why they're like this. They spend half of the time on the computers, no human connections, no nothing. And you think they'll be empathetic towards you, their parent? Only work. You can never work. So now let's take it a bit further. Let's go to when the kids are grown and you don't die. Oh, is that too quick for you? <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it too quick for you? Don't, think about it. Think about it. All this, I've watched my brothers and sisters and how they're doing this thing when my father died of, you know, the estate and who's going to get what. And I, I'm the firstborn. I stayed out of it. I'm like, ooh. I'm going to go make my own money. I don't need anything. Come and lock by me before they kill me. You guys understand what I'm saying, right? Before, I mean, you want to fight somebody over land, they will kill you in a heartbeat. And at that point, blood doesn't matter. What matters is money. You know, I posted something the other day about my father used to ask me, who's your father? When my friends brought, when I brought friends home, my dad would always say, who's your father? I didn't understand what he was saying. I thought it was very arrogant as a matter of fact. Until a few years ago, I realized that your family foundation tells people in those days about your mentality, about your mindset, because it's a mindset that matters, right? It's a mindset that matters. Let me tell you something. You raise these children believing that everything is all about them. I don't know about you, but I did. You remember I told, I used to come on here for like a year and talk about children and how I'm raising my children and how I'm rediscovering myself. See that Dinah Ross song, It's My Turn? That's where I am right now. It's my Moji's turn to leave. I'm 57. I'm finally traveling the world, even though my children has traveled. Everything I did was wrapped around my children because society told me that that's what I was supposed to do. They lied to me. They lied to you that your whole life is supposed to revolve around your children. Your whole being, your whole purpose in life is supposed to have children. It's a lie. Your purpose is, it might be to have children. Your child, though, is coming through you. You don't own that child. <laughs> Can I get an amen, somebody? You don't own that child. You are just the vessel that the child came through. And if you think your child will give up their life, to take care of you, if you, especially if you live in America, go to the nursing homes. Blood is not thicker than water. Go to the nursing homes. I broke my shoulder exactly three years ago. My wife was in Brazil. She just got there the night before. She jumped on the plane and she came right back. Like she got there last night. I broke my shoulder this morning at 7 a.m. She got on the plane by 12 noon, flew 12 hours back. None of my kids that were in America came to stand by my side. None. Actually, one of them was called and she said, oh, can you call me after the surgery is over in the morning? Call me tomorrow. If I had died, it would have been call me tomorrow. Go to nursing homes in America and see how many rich people are in nursing homes with nobody to see that. And it's strangers that come and take care of them. That's why I respect CNAs, nurses aides. I love and respect them because they're taking care of other people's parents and such. And these people are driving in Lamborghini Contashis waiting for their parents to die. So if you're sitting here talking about generational wealth and you're starving yourself, you're not feeding your soul, you're not traveling, you're not doing the things that you want to do, that you wish for your life because your children are your life, honey, when they get older, they are leaving. They will leave you. Yes, they will. They will leave you. And that's my prayer that all my children leave home because I don't want an incel in my basement. I don't want to. Afford, that's why we're raising them. We're sending them to school, spending all this money, spending all this time. Right. So that they don't end up in our basements for the rest of what their lives. Mary Oluwashion Salami says they are mayor with their friends and what they enjoy. Yeah, that's it. It's all this generation, this from like my 30. 32 and my 28 are different, but my 20 and my 18 year old, it's all about them. There's nothing. They're disrespectful. They're rude. They're condescending. They think they know everything. And look, it's not just this generation. Oh, let's not lie. 
But in my days, we were taught to respect our elders no matter what. We didn't talk back. We didn't abuse grown people. And you see, you see family's true nature come when somebody with money dies. When somebody dies, when a parent or a grandmother dies, people that have not shown up in 20 years to say hello, to take care of them, to nurture them, to do jack for them, will all of a sudden show up because now they want their own share of the loot. That's why me, I don't believe in generational wealth. You think your family, I have a story that came into my inbox, which is why I'm actually doing this show, where a young woman sent me, uh, not a young woman, a woman my age, sent me a, an, an inbox saying, Moji, can, you, can, can we talk? Can, can you help me figure this thing out? My stepbrother, which means the mother had two partners, two husbands, one child here, one child here. The son that she had first was raised by the stepfather as his son, but they never did paperwork. So when the stepfather, who now had one child, right? Remember these two guys are connected by blood, right? Her husband, the, my, my Facebook friend's husband that called me is the first son of, but of the same mother, but another mother. Do you know this son, who's the biological son of the new husband, totally dismissed the existence of the other kid. They shared the same blood through their mother. But when it came to money, blood did no, no, no longer mattered. Same thing when you're gay and you come out. The world is coming after you and coming down on you and people are shouting and screaming and your family turns their back on you. So is blood really thicker than water? My brother and sisters, my cousin, who's my favorite cousin in the world, did not show up at my wedding because I'm gay. Is blood really thicker than water? It's not. A stranger that I met on Facebook walked me down the aisle. 75 people came to that wedding. Only my biological children were there for me. My wife had one person and we had 45, 75 people at the wedding. If we think about it, I have 31 brothers and sisters, 31. If we had a wedding, there should have been like 5,000 people minimum because we're married to, my father married from every bloody village, it seems like, 12 wives. I should have had at least 5,000 people at that wedding. I had 75 that I handpicked. Most of them came from social media. So when people tell you social media is not a good thing, don't make friends, don't do this. Blood is thicker than water. It's a lie. Blood is not thicker than water. And even if it's thicker than water, you can't drink it. And you need water to survive. You need your blood to survive, but you can't drink water. When push comes to shove, most of the time, it's not family that stands up for you. At least in my case. You know, and when you keep having these kids all over the place and you're thinking they're going to be best friend, mm, no, they're not. No, they're not always going to be best friend. No, they're not always going to be best friends because there will always be competition between the two sets of kids. There will always be people that are trying to protect their own lineage. You know, it didn't even occur to me why Nigerians, some tribes in Nigeria would not allow women, right, to inherit land. I found out the other day because I was talking to an Igbo guy on Clubhouse. I was talking to an Igbo guy. I had one of those stages and he explained it to me. He said, when the, when a girl gets married in Nigeria, the girl now assumes the name of the new family, the husband, right? Now the girl, if she's allowed to inherit the land and all that stuff, the land now belongs to the, the wife's family. It doesn't stay in the lineage of the, the woman because her last name is now changed to the husband's name. So now the husband's family now inherits the land. I was like, whoa, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. Imagine working all your life and somebody else's family ends up with all that stuff. So what do you do? Merge the names so that the name always stays the same. But when it comes to having children or cousins and dogs and cats, if you think because you share blood with somebody, they will protect you. Money? No. When it comes to money, what I have learned is that the most dangerous people are actually the people that share my blood. Strangers have been kinder to me than my own family. 
Strangers have been kinder, I repeat, to me than my own family. The people I call my tribe are people that I met outside. Like I have a white sister. She and I used to work together, right? I don't, I, we're not blood. But I know that if anything happens to me today and I call my tribe, who's my family, that's not blood, they will be there. I can call blood till I'm blue in the face. And people will say, maybe it's you, Moji. Maybe it's because you have a bad, a bad attitude. But when they need something, they're quick to call me. See, my problem with half of these people that we all call family, and you know what I'm talking about. You know damn well what I'm talking about. These people that we continue to say family, 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 and we're dying over, and we're giving our all to, and we're sending them money, especially those of us in America. If you die tomorrow, they don't, they won't even know. They won't notice until, because nobody calls me. I just send money. They don't call me. They call me when it's the end of the month to say thank you. Or call me end of the month just to say hi. They don't call me to check up on me. They don't invite me to parties. And yet we say family, blood is thicker than water. Blood is not thicker than water. It's not. See, I have learned to define my family as the people that care about me. The people that invest their time. I don't need your money. Their timing to me. People that call and say, hi, Moji, how are you today? Not people that only call me because they need money. People that I know that if I have a headache, I can call and say, oh, my village people are after me, can we pray? And they'll get up at 2, 3 a.m. in the morning and pray with me. That's what family looks like to me. And when we start talking about, oh, my children are my life, my children are my life, God forbid. Because my children, I pray every day for them to get up and go and find their own life. My life is my life. The only person that has de de is God. Nobody else. I should not have to answer to anybody but the universe. God that created me. Allah, Buddha, whatever you call the I am that I am. But we 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 have this thing I call stupidities, where we think because somebody's our cousin, even though they're serial killers, we can't see them. Where we think because somebody's our son and your son is killing somebody, but you can't, you're clouded. And I don't mean physically killing somebody, they were killing somebody with their mouth. They could be killed with killing somebody with their with their with their with their actions. They could be bullying somebody. Honey, Mary, my sister, there's a link there if you want to come in and talk to me and could join me on stage. Please feel free to come to the back channel and let's have this conversation. This is why I love Clubhouse because I can talk to real people. <laughs> That's why I've been on Clubhouse a lot. I like to hear other people's opinions. But the truth is that friends are better to you sometimes more than your blood. Mother, your blood, brothers and sisters. And people want to go and, you know, we, we, we don't give credit where credit is due. We just give credit to people that share the same blood with us. And those are the ones that don't really, mm, they care about you when you're giving them money or they care about you when you have something of value to give to them. You know, when I realize blood is not thicker than water. Family is not always blood. Is when I lost everything. I was going through a really bad time in my life. I just got a divorce. No, I was going through a divorce. My ex-husband had sold the house that I lived in under me that we bought with my money. After giving him seven houses in exchange for the children. Hey, chai. he sold the house from underneath me. When I called family, family was doing bonku bonku. Two of them answered me, sent me money. But guess who took me in? A strange black American man, not even Nigerians. So when people are talking about all these experiences and such like that, I can't relate because strangers have been kinder to me than blood. And it's not that I'm a bad person. Maybe I am, but I don't think I am. But between the jealousy and the animosity and the envy that I have the courage to live my authentic life. Chai, you should, my eye don't see. Pe -pe. Let me tell you, if you don't take the time to invest in your life, in your friendships, because you believe that all your energy should be spent with family. And I'm not saying all family is bad, but you need to make sure that the people around you value who you are for you, not for what you bring to the table, not for how much money you're going to give them, not for the connections that you can bring to the table, but for who you truly are. After I gave up seven houses, seven houses in New York, do the math. The guy sold the house from underneath me. My children and I were homeless. 
this was in 2008. For seven months, I was sleeping on the mattress on the floor with these same kids. Many years later, the same kid, one of the two kids that I kept in my house, that I struggled for, that I sent to piano classes, that I shopped at Salvation Army so they can wear fancy clothing, and so they can go to good schools while I was rebuilding my businesses. Whose father owes me $95,000 today? One of them got up and because I said he cannot, he lied and I said, give me your phone, chose to go live with his father. After 16 years of me working my butt off, the other one stayed with my wife and I because he was getting everything yafun yafun, you know, living in a 1200 square foot section of our house, living in a house with an elevator and everything the boy wanted, he got therapy, name it, every gadget in the world. My fault. Sent him to school, he ate $3,000 in food in three months, $1,000 a month, aside of the food that we paid for. And then when Muji said something, he's like, I'm going to live with my father. I'm going, to, you know, I sent him to his dad. This spring back is with his father. His blood really thicker than water. Shabi, you would think, ah, uh -uh, this woman has spent her whole life taking care of me. This woman has done everything for me. This woman, there's no loyalty anywhere. Just because your blood doesn't mean people are going to be loyal to you. It doesn't mean they're going to like you. It doesn't mean that they will be fair to you either. And yes, I'm not the best human being in the world because I like to just speak the truth. But I can't help it because I lived a lie most of my adult life. So these days I just speak my truth. And my truth is the truth because I no longer walk around with rose color glasses. Actually, this one's a gray, Abby. Yeah. Before my glasses used to be rose, I only saw the best in human beings. I did not allow myself I did not allow myself to see people as they are, selfish, manipulative, uncaring users. If they keep telling you blood is thicker than water, blood is thicker than water, and I lie. I have friends whose family, whose brothers are suing them for their inheritance, even though traditionally the first child is the head of the family. They're suing the younger children are suing the first child for money. 13 years, the case is still in court. And we continue to say blood is thicker than water. Is it really? Family is not defined. I'm sorry. Family is not defined by blood. Family is defined by who shows up and shows out when you need somebody. Family is defined, I repeat. By not by blood, but by what? By people that show up and show out when you need somebody, when you want love, affection, compassion, empathy, whatever it is. That's what family looks like to Moji. That's what I know family to be. Family is my friends on Facebook that call me, text me. If I don't speak for a day, they will be my DMs. Are you okay? Is everything okay? That's family. Family are my people that work for me because we have the same goal. Half the time, you and your family are not even going in the same direction in life. And then they'll be hating you. Thank you, Mary. They'll be hating you, hating on you. Okay? Yes. Sonate, it's okay for children to want um, time with the other family. Actually, I, I insisted on it when they were growing up. But the key thing is, it's not okay for them to use you and then uh, leave you. It's not okay. It's not okay for a son or a child that you bring up to now join forces to hurt you. It's not okay. It's absolutely mandatory in my opinion, for you to allow your children to go and see how the other side leaves so they can appreciate you. Trust me. See these kids that went, they wanted to come, the first one wanted to come back. I said, no. Maybe you chose your bed. Go and lay in it. Because you need to understand the other side. And now he gets it. The one that just, uh, this, some, this semester, went over there because he doesn't want to face the consequences of his actions. 
uh-uh. If I wanted to punish him, I wouldn't even have thought to send him there. <laughs> so this is God. No, it's it's okay for them to spend fam time. You should never block your children from getting to know their other side of the family. But it's not okay for them to use you as a pawn or to use the other parent as a pawn. Because that's usually what happens when parents, uh, biological parents that are separated are not talking to each other. So now the children manipulate the situation. And that's not okay. In my books, it's not okay. You know, there's a huge difference be between, hi, Ola, there's a huge difference between a, 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 a family dynamic that's healthy and a family dynamic that's filled with narcissists that manipulate situa situations. And that's part of the reasons why I say we need to see people. Most of you call children children. I no longer call children children. Because I have learned that children are people. They're human beings. They have full autonomy to make decisions. They have full autonomy to choose what's good or what's good for them. And like most human beings, a lot of this new generation, they're only thinking about themselves. How many times have you been to, you know, have you thought about the fact that on your birthday, most of the time, when the kids are younger, you are the one giving them money to go buy you gifts. And as they get older, unless you switch that thing very early in life, you're training them. I repeat, you're training them not to value you, not to do for you. And then we come up here, or well, at least I do, and I complain. You remember I've been told, me, I have no shame. I own it. See, every time I allow myself to be the last on the list of anything, I'm training these kids how to be a husband, a friend, uh, a father, or mother. That's why when I started my journey to self, I had to bring, I was lucky I brought my daughters along. DNA sometimes is stronger than nurture. And every time people say, oh, I have five children and they're all going to be friends. And I made more babies so that they can all have friends. Now lie. It doesn't work that way. People's energies sometimes doesn't gel. People's energies sometimes is not going to work. Right? Like, I don't get along with every human being in the world. There's 70 billion people, by the way. And I haven't even met about 100,000 people yet. But for me... When I spiritually connect with a person, it's very organic. It's not because you dash me money or you give me money. Uh, I wrote a piece a few weeks ago where I said, look, because I was tired. Somebody that's family to me, right? The only time I ever hear from that person is when they need money. It's always money, money. Oh, Auntie Moji, can I have? Oh, Auntie Moji, can I have? Ah, why is it only when I want to give you, when you need something that you call me? How, do you ever call me to find out how I'm doing? Do you ever call me to find out how my work is doing? Do you even know what I do for a living? I said to the person. And the person just laughed. Ah, you know, uh, it's Nigeria now, the internet. I'm like, I see you on Facebook all day. You can't slide into my DM and say, ah, Moji, are you okay? Strangers do that. But you, blood, don't do that. How is blood thicker than water? Why do we all say blood is thicker than water? The consistency might be thicker than water, but the analogy is really jacked up because they are, that analogy is why a lot of us are damaged. Damaged, we put up with so much crap from human beings that we don't realize just because we have the same blood flowing or uh, we share DNA does not make them family. Family is not always blood. Family are those people that show up in your life that are always there. Like Oladio, you have never met in my life, but to me, he's family. He's always here. He supports what I'm doing. He says hi. You know, hi, Muri. You know, he, they, these are people that care. Those are family to me. And at the end of the day, maybe it's because I'm gay as well, and I've been rejected most of my adult life by the people I, I truly, really care about, or I thought I had to care about. How about we put it that way? And I realized that I am a butterfly, honey. And anybody that wants to be a part of Moji's life, and this is the advice. 
Anybody that wants to be a part of your life should contribute something to your life. Life should not be a one-way street where you're always the one giving, giving advice, giving money, giving this and giving that. When it's your turn that you just need somebody to talk to, do they really, really listen to you? Right? Do they really, really, really listen to you? So, Nata, I see your comments, and I'm coming to that in a minute. Those are the people that I call family, the people that invest in me. Now, I said family is not blood, and your life should not revolve around your children. Revolve around your children. Up to a certain age, your children depend on you. After a certain age, you should have raised them enough to be able to be self sufficient, not financially or emotionally, but sufficient as in self, no, self-aware to the point where they can go to the toilet themselves. You can go and do a class without running around like crazy, make negotiations and co compromises. Your children should not be your life. I have 50 year olds, my age, I'm 57. I have 57 year old people running around saying my children are my life. Well, if your children are your life, then it means you have no life because your children, my prayer is that my children have their own life so that I, Moji, can have my life. A lot of Nigerian women, they leave their husbands in Nigeria. They come here and babysit their children's children, leave their husbands at home and then worry about, <laughs> and then their husband finds somebody else to what? Take care of him. And they want to get upset. They want to get upset. You left your husband at home for three years to come and be nanny to your child that has her own life that will not leave her husband to come and sit with you for three years if you have cancer. People's heads are not correct. And they say it's a culture. Culture she will work in weary culture. You're, finally, your children are out of the house. You're supposed to be building a life, a new life with your husband without the kids. You're supposed to be doing the totopoli all over the house. You're supposed to be playing totopoli everywhere, scattering the bed, scattering the living room, scattering everywhere because for many years, you've dedicated your life to looking like Holy Mary, Mother of Christ. Now you are done raising children and your husband finally thinks that he's going to have you to himself or your partner, because you know I'm a lesbian. But you guys, your life is your children. Your children is your life. You start minding your son's business, in, uh, prognosing inside your son's business, instead of allowing your son to have his own family. Right? But no, your children are your life, so you don't have a life. Then your husband leaves you. You want to blame your husband. Life leaves you. You want to blame that person. When it's you, that's to blame. Because you never self-actualize. You don't know who the hell you are. You don't know what you want from life. So you live vicariously through your children. Honey, don't let me go there. That's Wednesdays. We're going to talk about that on Wednesday. But I thought I should touch on it for a moment. Today, this particular one is about blood is not thicker than water. Anyways, so Sonate Akogenu. 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 I like that name. Anyways, it says... But I think your life should revolve around your children and when they're dependent and not able to care for themselves. Yes, I agree with that. You take care of your children and invest in them to help them to be able to stand up for themselves so that they can go ahead and take care of their own children to avoid them becoming a burden on you in your older years. Shuku to you. I think as parents, our job is to raise our children and set them out into the world to lead their own lives, raising their kids as well as we have thought taught then yes 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 i like that a lot i really believe that um i get you on the clinic on raising parents as pawns and using your hell yeah that's what most i did it too i did it i my father raised me i will honey let me tell you i will go to one stepmother my father had 12 wives i'll go to one woman she'll say no i'll go to another one she'll say no then i'll go to the other one and said the other one said yes so that she can say yes i mean we all played that games we all play those games. Broken, when you come from a broken home, right? Children from broken homes, you, you know, we all do that. But there's a sense of responsibility, right? And guilt that we all have later in life. But can we try and avoid, because can we try and avoid all these pitfalls that we all go through? 
Can we? By speaking the truth. Speak the truth to each other. Don't be afraid. Like they say in my village, speak the truth and let the devil be ashamed. Because at the end of the day, honey, it's you that will live your life. A friend of mine died two days ago. Two days ago. She was 55. 55. Her last son just left the house. She never traveled. She worked every day since I've known her. And I knew her for 30 years. In this, your America. She had two jobs. She was a nurse. Had two jobs. 9 to 11. Uh, no, 11 to 7. 11 midnight to 7 a.m. She would get home. And then, if I cry, forgive me. And then at... at um, she would leave the house at 2 because she had to be at work at 3 to 11. So she worked two jobs, double shifts. Had five hours or six hours a day. Never even saw the kids. Had a living cousin or something from Nigeria that she brought in. Her oldest son just um, went into university. And all the while she was raising those kids, it was just her. She was a single parent like me. That's how we became friends. And when I was in New York, we would exchange, like this weekend I'll pick them up, next weekend she'll get them. And that's how we did it for a long time until, you know, we kind of went our separate ways. I bet she was waiting, waiting to enjoy her life. Blood is not, I'm telling you, blood does not make people family. Because apparently she had been ill for a while. None of her children left their home to come and live with her. She had to pay a CNA to take care of her. A lot of horrible stories out there. And I've had amazing stories as well. I mean, my mother, I met at 37. I met my mother for the first time. Aside of the time that I came out of her, you know. <laughs> I met her for the first time. I was 37 years old. We didn't get along at all. Till today, I still send her money because she's my mother. We're so slowly building a friendship. But originally, I was only doing it because she's my mother, because blood, the Bible says I have to, right? But now we're building a friendship. I don't even see her as my mother. I just see her as my friend. Because that expectation of mothering, a mother, uh, uh, you can't mother if it's something year old woman. It's impossible. And I think part of the thing is that, you know, our job is to raise and train our children when they're young. And then we pray that we become very good friends when we're older. Right. But I find that a lot of people never even build that friendship. Like my daughter and oh, there's one daughter and I that are like this. <sighs> I'm just so proud of her. And I don't even call her my daughter. I call her my friend. Like, we talk to each other like we're just cool like that. We're like, you know, she helps me pick out my wigs and my weaves and my makeup. And we, we have fun together. We, you know, we just talk about everything and anything. And I admire her. I really, really admire her. I admire her because she took life lessons from my life. And she's now living her life the way she wants to. She's not married. She's 28, master's degree, doing her own thing, climbing up the ladder, the corporate ladder. I'm so proud of her. Because I allowed her to come with me on my journey to self. I shared books with her that I was reading my self-help books. I talked to her about when I went into therapy. She's gone to therapy as well. Because we're all damaged. I mean, damaged people who have been raising damaged kids with no family around. And they say blood is thicker than water. No, it's not. Blood you need. But you need to drink water too. So if you just continue to stay with people, and the reason I'm saying it, this is because there's a lot of toxic people in our lives. And because they're family, we don't cut them off. Because they're family, we do not let them go. Because they're family, we believe that, you know, that's that we have to have them in our lives. No, you don't. If somebody is toxic, let them go. If somebody is not recipro reciprocal, oh, I can't even speak English today. If they're not giving you what you want, Cut them loose. Family is not always blood, though. Family are the ones that honor you, that honor your existence, that take care of your spirit, your mental space. 
and they show you compassion, empathy, love, and kindness. Not people that use you. All this family is blood. Family is blood. Half of you don't have houses in America. You're building mansions in Nigeria. For who? For who? These same family people will set you up to be kidnapped and killed while you're in Nigeria. Who are you building homes for? Build your life wherever you are. And stop enabling people. Stop infantilizing people. Stop infantilizing your sons. That's Wednesday's conversation. I'm doing this for the whole month. You know, this is therapy for me. So I hope you're enjoying yourself. But you really must understand that just because somebody shares the same DNA with you, it doesn't make them family, honey. It really doesn't. It makes them people you know. If One of my new things is everybody, I give everybody the same slate. Your people. My children, I don't call them children anymore. I call them people because they're 19, soon to be 19, and soon to be 20, 21. The older girls are doing their own things. But my sons, they're still young. And with they, they're in this new generation I call they, them. <laughs> Self-centered. Could have been amazing, and I'm guilty. I'm not going to lie and say I wasn't part of their upbringing. I'm guilty for it. Because a lot of us single parents, we overcompensate. We feel guilty, so we allow them. We allow them, especially the sons, to take advantage of us. We allow our sons to manipulate us. We overgive our sons. We don't allow them to earn things. And yes, because of the way we infantilize them, I almost say we disrespect and dishonor them. Because if I saw my son as a person that actually, actually was able to fend for himself, I would not have infantilized him. Guilty. You know, I have no shame. I'm going to tell you where we're wrong. And that's why I'm sitting here saying, you got to stop this. Because the way we've been taught was to make everything about these kids, everything about everybody else, never take control of ourselves, never value who we are, never worry about what we want to achieve in life. And then we get older and get bitter. Not Muji. Diana sang this song, It's My Turn. That's been my national. When I started posting it on Facebook, I didn't even know where it was going. I started posting, It's My Turn to Be All I Can Be. I hope you'll understand. This time's just for me because it's my turn. I didn't know where I was going. Diana sang that song. I kept putting it on Facebook and putting it on Facebook. And before you know it, my brain started to go t -t 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 -t. And it was a mindset shift. And today I'm living the life I want. I'm absolutely deliriously madly in love with my wife. And we are living the life that we want. And we're paying the price for it. Sometimes you have to let go of what they call blood. See, sometimes it's family that's holding you back from getting to your promised land. See that cousin, that uncle, that auntie that you choose not to let go of is what's stopping you from growing up, from getting to where God wants you to go. Sometimes even your children are what's stopping you from getting where you need to go. Seriously. The whole point is, you have to decide what's important to you. If you want your life to be your children, shuku to you. But please don't come in my inbox and complain. If you want your family to be your whole life and not, you know, your extended family, not your nuclear family, not you and your husband, even Gonsef, by the way, if I have to pick between my children and my wife about certain issues, I will pick my wife any day, any time. And I would expect my children to do the same thing with whatever man, if they're heterosexual, or partner, if they're um, LGBTQ, that they choose. Because that's their new family. Even the Bible said that. And I, you know I don't quote Bibles. But the Bible, I've been reading the Bible a lot because I, there's a lot of stories in there that the way it's explained to us doesn't make sense. The Bible said a man will leave his family and go and start a new family. Somewhere in there it said that. I'm ad living now. But yet, because most mothers don't have fathers, don't have their own life, they insert themselves into their children's lives. Sometimes you have to cut off people. Low. 
I have no beef with anybody cutting me off because it means we're not gelling. We bring no value to each other's lives. And that's okay. I'm cool with that. If I don't bring you value, don't come to my show. If I don't bring you value, don't come to my show. Even if you if you don't bring me value, Seth, don't come to my show. I don't need your money. Thank God. And what I mean by I don't need your money is that the views, people get paid on views. So I don't need your money. I'm not saying share the video so people can like it and love it. I'm saying share the information. Right? Family is not always blood oath. Don't let them fool you. Family could be a stranger you meet today that wants what's best for you. Family could be your, what, your gates man that's compassionate, empathetic, but because it doesn't share the same DNA with you, right? They really believe that these people are not family. Your cousin that you haven't seen in 10 years will show up and say, hey, because I'm family, I, I can sleep in your house. No, honey. Your husband's family will come and tell you to leave your matrimonial bed <laughs> so they can sleep in the master bedroom uncle you're not the master of my house you have to start to build boundaries around you and your partner you and your family the ones you created not because people have blood because you share the same last name or because you share the same dna it doesn't mean they care about you it doesn't mean they love you a lot of these same people will kill you to get what you have if they know that you made a will with their names in it they might kill you first while your friends will be rooting for you to become a better person. Sometimes your friends and even strangers are more like family. The family, the people I call family, total strangers. Most of them I met on social media. I've known them 10, 15 years. I, I have friends that I've known for 30 years that I will call before I call anybody with the same last name as me because they have proven to me that they care about me. They have shown me compassion. They've shown me love. They've shown me respect. They have accepted me, all of me, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Life is a journey. But to have the best journey possible, you have to be very truthful with yourself. You must understand that life is a journey, and sometimes you have to let go of people to get to your promised land. And sometimes those people are family. I say, unfollow, unfriend, just zap them out of your life. Anyone that's toxic. We've been brainwashed into believing that if somebody's family, we must, oh, I repeat, we must have them in our life. I'm the first one to tell you. That it's not always true. And you can say, oh, Moji, it's because you didn't grow up with your mother. It's because you came to America on your own at a very young age. So you've always been alone. It was the hardest walk of my life. But trust me, if I had to be submerged in the madness that I now know to be the dynamic, that dysfunctional family of mine, I would not be the Moji that I am today. Sometimes. Fantasia said, sometimes you have to lose to gain again. Sometimes you have to lose to gain again. So remember that family is not always blood. It is those people that show up and show out. Those are the family in your life. We all must learn. It's, it's very hard, but we truly all must learn how to... Uh, Figure out who's who in our lives. We need a benchmark of some sort. But it's as individual as our fingerprints. Because what Moji needs might not be what Sonata needs. What Moji needs, what Sonata needs might not be what Mary needs. And what Ola needs might not be what um, somebody else needs. So we just have to figure out what works for us. Design your life. Don't worry about who's blood and who's not blood. Worry about who brings value to your life. Worry about who makes you feel whole and not broken. Worry about those that fan, that fan. Like the wind is not blowing, you know, and they'll stand there and they'll take paper and fan your, fan your wings so you can fly. 
those to me are what family looks like. Not the vultures and those people that just suck you dry. Yeah. Family is not always blood. It's those that show up and show out in your life. Remember that blood is thicker than water, but you can't drink blood. Then what? Anyways, it's Moji Solo Wilson. Thank you for letting me do this. I really enjoy being back here, man. So let's meet back on Wednesday. We're going to talk about children. Ah, children are my life. It's going to be the same thing. It's the same umbrella topic. You know, families is, um, yeah. But we'll talk about the children aspect of it and how a lot, a lot of parents lose themselves in their children. And by the time they try to find themselves, it's too late. The world has moved on. People are doing so much else, right? Yep, I have to go. I'm in a whole city and it's snowing outside. Let me see if I can show you guys what's going on where I am. Look. Oh, you can't see. Never mind. It's snowing outside. So I have to go get dressed, do something fun and fabulous. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And again, my favorite song is the song is my prayer every day open the doors to my happiness oh god open the doors to my happiness may what brings me joy not bring me tears that is one of the most powerful songs that I've ever heard in my life. And I used to use it for every show and I stopped, but I'm going back to using it because for me, it's everything. My name is Mojisola Wilson. I want you guys to start coming into the studio with me because I want to hear your opinions, your thoughts. I love that you engage and you join the conversation. I love it and I appreciate you. I know that without you guys, I will not be who I am today, because you have sat here, a lot of you have been here since 2009, going on that roller coaster journey to self with me. And yeah, we made it. Well, we're still on that journey, but we're doing very well, right? I'm grateful to all of you, Sonata. Um, yeah, Sonata, thank you for being here. And Mary, thank you for being here. Ola Deye, thank you for being here. Um, let's see who's, who's this Madeline Ugo. It's so good to see you. And I can't wait till Wednesday, every show I do from now on, I promise I'm going to put the link there, right? I'm going to put the link there so that you guys can come to the back studio and sit on stage with me and just chit chat with me because it's important that we talk to each other. I think there's so much you can teach me, right? There's so much you can share with me from your walk, from your journey. That's going to make my life a lot better as well. It's been swell. I am so happy to be back. Oh my God, I feel amazing. I hope you do too. Have a great day and I will see you Wednesday at 10 a.m. Namaste. Thank you guys for coming.